you have believed it? I did. Yes? Yeah. You thought it was good forever? Yeah, you know, when uh, when you get a restaurant in uh, this whole, I don't know what they got now, whether they got Rio's, Caesar's, maybe Harrah's, and Flamingo. Link, Flamingo. Right? Am I right? Yeah. So when you put a restaurant in, they come and they check your menu out and they look at it. And so I had catfish in a basket with fries and hush puppies and I had a uh, fried bologna sandwich. And so when I came back for the uh, menu testing, they took those two off. Well, they had catfish, but they had it uh, uh, like cornmeal crusted in a, uh, it wasn't country, I don't remember what they had. They even had fried potatoes with it. And it was like, and then they didn't have the fried bologna sandwich. I said, hey, we can't, we gotta have, you know, we gotta have my thing. It's gotta be Southern. People aren't gonna believe it if they show up. And the chef gets up, the head of the chef, and he says, how exactly do you make a fried bologna sandwich? And I go, well, you cut her about yay thick, put it on the grill, take your Texas toast, some cheese on it, some grilled onions or whatever they want, melt it down, cut it in half. Now when it's going to bubble up on you, so you have to split it. Keep it bubbling. I told him that. He goes, all right. So I came back. They had a three-month uh, soft opening. And I said, what's the number one seller? He goes, we're three times. We're three times what our estimates were. And I said, what's your number one seller? He said, that effing fried bologna sandwich. I said, we got them. I can bring them here once, but you got to get them coming back. You cook back at home? I do. That's what I was raised on. It sounds disgusting. Let me tell you. To me. Well, because you never had any. You never eat it. But when you're poor in the country, your dad gets paid on Friday, your mom cashes a check on Saturday, she buys groceries during the week, and you run out of sausage, bacon, and ham for breakfast Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So Friday before he comes home with his check, you're down to bologna sometimes. And mom would fry bologna and put it with eggs and feed it to us for breakfast, and we loved it. We grew it. It's just like in England with shepherd's pie, where you throw in all the leftovers. Yeah. Yeah, same kind, same of kind of thing. I bet a shepherd's pie would work in here. A southern one, yeah. not an English one. No, I bet, I bet an English one would. <laughs> all the leftovers. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, what have you done to it to um, change it up in, the, in this 10th year? Not one thing. Really? No. Well, they said that there was they, re they, they did a remodel of the building. They remodeled the building. They shut down two or three months remodel, but the menu and pretty much stays the same. You, you, they don't change whiskey and beer. No, I, I, how, how many are there of these across the country? Five. 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 Yeah. Is this number one? Number one. Number one for revenue and turnout of customers. Yeah, number two is in the Patriots, uh, Boston, New England Patriots Stadium, and their parking lot. There's one. And there's three in Oklahoma. Within walking distance of their house. No, they're downtown Oklahoma City, Tulsa, at the casino, and on the Texas line on the south south uh, end of Oklahoma, on the uh, Texas line. You want more of these? Uh, sure. Sure. I, mean, I don't want to babysit more of them, but if they're, people pick good spots, we have good operators, I mean. All right, let's jump to music a minute. Okay. Um, everybody loved Red Cup. I mean, it was like... Did you love it the instant you heard it and Absolutely. played it? Absolutely. How, how do you find something like just as incredible right behind it? You know. You don't. No, you don't find it. Like, like one, one in a thousand. Yeah. It was a song that went around town for, I mean, I write 90% of my stuff. It was one of those songs that was pitched to me that had been all over town and every big artist had a chance to do it and they didn't have the cojones. And so when it came to me and I said, I'll cut that son of a bitch. I said, I'm gonna cut it. Then everybody came back and tried to get it. They knew that it was gonna be a mistake. And they all came after it and the guys that wrote it said, no, we gave it to you, we're giving it to you. And then you seen what happened. I remember that night in the MGM in the Grand Garden Arena when, uh, what was that bit? ACMs or yeah, ACMs or something. ACMs. And you walked in in the dark and, and you were carrying the crowd. Yeah. yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, it was a adult nursery rhyme that was infectious the first time you heard it. Yep. 
and those kind of things have short lives, but they're big while they're alive, you know what I mean? They're like a virus that somebody finds a cure for it. But it was like big for a year and a half, and then it just goes into the history books of being on Music Smash, but it was, uh, it dominated its life. No one would have traded songs, no one would have, everybody would have traded songs with me that day. They would have loved to have that to play for the crowd. Do you, do you get it requested every time you go somewhere? Everywhere I go. Did you know that Red's, that a Solo Cup was in bankruptcy when I cut that song? No. Look at it. The Plastic Company? The Plastic Company was in bankruptcy. They called and said that one line in the song, I really hate how you're easy to crack, was was uh, downgrading their company and they were in bankruptcy. And I went to Europe on a tour. When I came back, our song was at four million spins on YouTube and climbing the charts everywhere. And the Red Solo Cup sold to Dark Drinking Cup Company for four billion dollars. I didn't get a freaking penny out of it. <laughs> I might have my numbers off a dollar or two, I, I understand. but that's kind of what happened. Toby Keith pissed over that? Yeah. Were you? No, I wasn't pissed. No. I'm you, you sold four billion records. Yeah, I could sell the t-shirt. So, <laughs> but you can't go anywhere you don't see Red Solo Cup. Remember, right. merchandise, remember big, right? Right. It changed the whole You saved cup. the company. I saved the company. I made a Where did you get out of it? Nothing. I mean, I got my. You got your. I get my show. empire out of it. But nothing from that. Nothing from that. Did they say, dear Mr. Keith, thank you very much? No, they didn't say shit. I'm <laughs> 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 pissed. I ain't pissed. Oh, right. I'm blessed. Yeah, you're blessed. Ninety-nine percent of the music you record, you write yourself. Where do you get the inspiration from? Um, Does it everywhere? I mean, I could literally walk out here tonight and you say something to me that I think about and go, that sounds like a song, so it can come from me. My antenna's out all the time. You just cut a new album, recorded a new album? What's, what's that about? Uh, most of it was recorded at my house in Mexico that I stay in the winter, and I brought uh, six of the greatest songwriters uh, in history to my house for a retreat. 20 songs and I cut eight of them. In Mexico? In Mexico. You have a studio in the house? No, no. Hey, yes, I do. Okay. But I, not in Mexico. We, we wrote the songs in Mexico, but we recorded, in recorded tracks in Nashville and did all the vocals and after in uh, my house. Talk to me about why Vegas is, it has become Nash Vegas and this city has gone berserk for. I think uh, I think all the music in the world that's on the radio has gone hip hop, and I think people that are any age at all, like that are into into that. Uh, and I mean, they still got hip hop here, straight up hip hop, real hip hop. But I'm saying all the other industries have all gone kind of hip hop. So you have no other choice but country. And so the people that uh, like Steven Tyler and. Uh, Sammy and uh, other rock stars have come to our industry to try to find a home because rock and roll died about 10 years before country did. And now real country's dying and everything's what it is. It's more techno and and so um, I think they book these acts because they're people that are in here with money, that are spending money, want to hear music that they can sing along with, that they know and they're familiar with. And I think that's why the Eagles, Billy Joel, and those guys are so popular on the airwaves, is because we all grew up listening to that. And Willie, Wade, you know. So you say rock and roll died 10 years ago, and country itself is dying? Yeah. Because it's being overproduced? It's no, it's not, uh, it's not country anymore. What, what, how do you describe it? I don't even know how. It doesn't sound country to anybody and uh, I, I don't say rock died out of my own, you know, rock died. My friends in rock and roll tell me that, you know, we don't have a format anymore. If, if Sammy, my buddy Sammy Hagar, Steven Tyler, uh, any of those cats, Bob Seger puts out a new album, they don't have a radio station to go to to say, play this song. Yeah, because they've played on the classic stations and classic doesn't play new rock. 
and there's really no new format for those guys and girls to go to. And uh, they told me 10 years ago, John Cougar, all those guys, uh, they all said, you know, kind of died, we don't really have a format anymore. So a lot of them have kind of started coming over doing their albums in Nashville and being country. It's kind of like the last oasis in the desert to uh, salvage any music you want to be heard. How do we say that? I don't, the world will just have, the pond will have to flip over, you know what I mean? It's got to be, uh, it is what it is, and I'm not, uh, I swore years ago when I heard the older guys griping at us about being the new guys, but I'm not going to gripe about it. I'm successful, I don't care. I'm going to make my music, my fans will find it, buy it or they won't. I sell my tickets, as long as that's all there, I'll go do it, but uh, it'd take a, it'd take a, uh, I don't even know, maybe the, a bunch of the radio stations would have to just say we're going to start playing new country that's real country instead of playing we're playing country and it's old country. No, here's what it is. Does that make you sad? It makes me sad that the format of it's gone. You no, know, it made me sad that, uh, I mean, I've been blessed. I've been around since 93 and I've had a great run and I'm still out there having fun and I enjoy it every night. The fans are. My crowd's awesome. I got my own following, I created my own thing, but it makes me sad that new artists coming along that do play country really don't have a place to go. It doesn't make me sad about that. It, it breaks my heart that, that somebody new that wants to come along and be true to the format and that they don't have a place to go. Yeah, I mean, I do. You don't see it changing? No, it won't change. Because it's always going to be what it is. It's, it's a kid-driven market. It's, uh, the youth drives the market. And whatever the youth wants, and if the young uh, people that list the country want, um, you know, they want uh, that kind of music, then that's what they're going to play. Mickey Vegas can help save Vegas, ne Vegas needs a little saving itself, don't they? We're getting better get the last year. The last year we've been getting better. Well, it's a, uh, it's definitely a, uh, Vegas is bringing more country acts in here than anybody. Right. But the people that come here are successful and have lived long enough to have financial wherewithal to be able to come to Vegas and enjoy themselves and buy a ticket and they want to hear music they grew up on. And country and rock present that to them so they can they can buy that and, and get that done but it, it, it's not going to change the format. So two questions to wrap this up. Toby Keith in a happy place or what's next for Toby Keith? Uh, well I take off in the winter now. I only work June to uh, basically June to October and then uh, and I do what I want to do in the winter. And uh, doing whatever I want to do, yeah. Me and Sammy hang out in the bottom. And then, uh, you know, I'm always writing, and I usually record in the spring, put something out and do another tour, and just keep it going. If it keeps rocking, fine. If it don't, I can fish the whole year. <laughs> so you're in a happy place. Happy place. It could be better. It could be better. Thank you. As always. All right, buddy. Enjoy talking to you, too, bro. Thank you. Two more.